If you are a tech enthusiast, then you have probably heard of Iron Man. With a limited amount of resources, Tony Stark managed to construct a very advanced armor within a cave. Then this would bring you to wonder that what if someone with some technical knowledge could make a robot just like him? Okay, yeah, I know that was just a movie, and Tony Stark is a fictional character, but trust me, this is definitely possible. By using just Scratch, you can make your own humanoid robot. How? Well, let's talk about this in today's video. Make sure to watch the video till the end. Hey everyone, welcome to AI Universe. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel and press the bell icon to never miss an update on the new things we bring for you regarding the tech and the trends, but also the vital difference between the haves and the have-nots. With that being said, let's get into it. A core purpose of this video is to create a dual-arm collaborative robot that has a humanoid shape and functions as a team member. Our society echoes with both fear and hope in the field of robotics, because robotics is at the heart of the new industrial revolution of the 21st century. As a result of these concerns, we are aiming at building a collaborative robot, which means that once it is designed and developed, it will be able to safely interact with humans without any risk of doing any damage to them. This is contrary to a classic robot that is often found in factories where the goal is to replace humans with a collaborative robot that assists and supports humans during repetitive and or dangerous tasks. As soon as the human instructs the robot on how to perform the task, the robot will repeat it. It is still necessary for this human operator to oversee the robot and provide his her intelligence in order to interpret and respond to various situations. However, despite the recent progress made by artificial intelligence, still require a high level of skill that is far beyond the capabilities of common robots today. In order to meet this challenge, the solution has been to combine both man and machine in harmony by using the robot for strength and endurance as well as the human for intelligence. A practical example would be a situation where the robot lifts heavy objects that need to be moved, but the human guides the arm of the robot and places the object at the precise spot it needs to be. Well, those robots are a bit tricky and require a certain level of superiority, so today I am going to tell you how to make a humanoid robot that can perform simple tasks. However, before you make this, you should know a few little things, such as how to write a program, how to use microcontrollers, etc. Step 1. Making a head and body frame. To do this, you will need tools and materials such as the following. 1. 16 servos, 8 high torque servos, 4 lever servos, and 4 micro servos. 2. Broken head robo sapien, or you can make it from ping pong ball or something similar. 3. Microcontrollers that are capable of supporting a camera. You can use Raspberry Pi, Arduino, or STC. 4. Flat water pipe PVC. 5. Scissors. 6. Transparent bottle plastic. 7. Strong glue plastic glue. 8. Ruler and pencil. So the first step is to remove the head from the broken Robo Sapien body and cut it out. Using the back head as a new face and the glass helmet as a back head, you can make the new face. The face that is used in Robo Sapien will not be used. For the new head, we will be adding a camera shield and a micro servo for horizontal movement, so we will need to make a holder for the servo. To create the face, we used a plastic transparent bottle cut and shaped to fit on the head as needed. After that, we glued on the micro servo and the camera shield. Now it is time to add the additional micro servo for vertical movement and connect it with the horizontal micro servo on the head using a shaft servo connector. Make a holder for the second servo, and then put two high torso servos on the right and left for the shoulders. Now step two, making a leg. The first thing you need to do is draw the foot model and then customize it with the size of the robot you intend to make. Next, cut and paste a high torse into each ankle joint. With a little bit of fire, hold the piece of PVC and then make a frame holder for the next servo with the high torsos. To mount the servo on its frame, first create a double mount shaft on the servo, then add the PVC plate and the tube using glue, and for an added hold to the servo, use the back screw on the servo and create a frame for knee mount the same way the second servo frame. Create a three-legged stool. The size must be the same. Step 3. Making a hand and griper. Making a hand is not very different from making a leg, especially if you use the same size servo as for the leg. I recommend that you use more small servos, and on each of the servos, add a tube so that both legs will be same height. To make it look more natural and like a human hand, but with three fingers, you could make the gripper like a paper craft but with PVC as the material and then add little mechanisms to make it look as if it is a human hand. Step 4. Merge all parts and finish. As you can see, now we have the head and body together. 
The leg part and the hand part have been merged all together with a strong glue or screw for sure. Next, we need to make a battery case for it. It would be good if you could make some cover for your foot and body using flat PVC sheets, the form of the design you want, using a little fire and some manual work. The last step is to connect all the servo motors to the micro and write some programs. It is best to use EasyBoard and for that, the JD Robot program should be used. Because you are likely to be new to robotics, take a simple and easy approach. There are already some impressive robotic inventions on the market. For instance, InMove is the first open source 3D printed life-size robot that walks and talks. InMove, although it has the humanoid look that robots have in the movies, come in a range of sizes and shapes that serve a wide range of purposes for both businesses and consumers. Robots are everywhere, and they won't be going anywhere anytime soon. During the last year, North American businesses purchased nearly 35,000 robots, a 10% increase from 2015. This is due to the measured increase in productivity and speed that robots provide. In addition, it is projected that more than 1 in 10 households in the U.S. will own a robot by the end of this decade, up from 1 in 25 in 2015. The significance of these statistics suggests that there is a need for a more mainstream understanding of all that goes into building an operational robot, no matter how simple or complex it may be. Ultimately, there is a lot of discourse on the topic of how to build a robot that all seems to revolve around. It is true that there are many ways to accomplish this task, but knowledge and patience are essential for success. The process involves establishing a clear strategy, weighing the pros and cons of different operating systems, programming the brain to accomplish desired functions, and creating physical components that facilitate the robot's predetermined functionality. Further, collaborative robots will one day be able to assist people in their own homes, in cases of a physical disability, to complete different tasks from everyday life, as well as provide emergency help in the event of an emergency. The design of collaborative robots must ensure that they are intrinsically safe and are able to detect possible collisions with the user so as to avoid any contact forces that could cause harm to the user. In order to achieve that, as I said before, we simply need patience and knowledge. Anyway, that's it for today's video. Tell us in the comments about your experience while making it and what problems you faced. Also, if you want to learn how to make any other technology or gadget, feel free to comment down below. And we hope you have enjoyed the video. Make sure to like the video and subscribe to our channel for such interesting topics. And catch you in the next video. Until then, peace.